Good morning. Welcome to worship at St. Stephen's Episcopal Church for this fifth Sunday in Lent. I'm the Reverend Amelia Arthur, the Associate Priest, and I'm glad you're worshiping with us.
ourselves and the truth is not in us but if we confess our sins God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor most merciful God we confess that we have sinned against you in thought word and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. the collect of the day. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and afflictions of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely be there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke. Though I was their husband, says the Lord, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, know the Lord. For they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. How shall the young keep their way clean by keeping to your word? With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not stray from your commandments. I treasure your promise in my heart that I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Instruct me in your statutes. 
With my lips I recite all the judgments of your mouth. I take greater delight in the way of your decrees than in all manner of riches. I will meditate on your commandments and give attention to your ways. My delight is in your statutes. I will not forget your word. A reading from the book of Hebrews. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he also says in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. This is a reading from the Gospel according to John. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say, Father? Save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, The voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Word of the Lord. What a strange story in today's Gospel. I don't even know if it ever happened that meeting with the Greeks who were asking to see Jesus, whatever they might have wanted, whatever they were looking for, we don't even know if they ever got it. We don't know if they ever saw it. 
What we do know is that something changed for Jesus just because they asked to see him. It's as if their request is some sort of signal that his final chapter is about to begin. No longer is it just his friends and neighbors who are looking for him. No longer is it just the sick and the weary. No longer is it just the scribes and the Pharisees. No, these guys are not the regular locals. They are from way out of town. They're not even Jews. These are people of the wider world. And we don't have any idea, really, why they wanted to see Jesus. But what we do know is that once Jesus gives his little speech to Philip and Andrew, and once he tells the crowds they aren't just hearing thunder, but a voice from heaven trying to tell them that he is indeed glorified by God his Father, the gospel goes on to tell us that Jesus went from here and hid. <laughs> right. It's as if he's requested to appear, to appear at an international summit to make a public and potentially advantageous connection with the Greek delegation, and instead, he goes and hides. It's as if he's invited to come out into the light, yet he opts instead to dive into the darkness. I mean, what's it going to be, Jesus? Light or dark? And the answer is, for a little while longer, it's going to be dark. But another thing the gospel lets us know is that Jesus is clearly a little uncomfortable. He's clearly a little frustrated. He shared his time with the people. He has revealed God, his Father, in healings and miracles, signs and wonders. He's just only arrived in Jerusalem to the adoration of the cheering crowds and the criticism of the dour and relentless Pharisees. And the people near him hear a voice of God from heaven glorifying Jesus, yet they say eh, it's probably just thunder or maybe some mumbling angel. And Jesus just sort of snaps, I think. That voice has come for your sake, not for mine, he says. And then he utters something about judgment and the ruler of the world, whatever that is, and being lifted up, whatever that means, and everyone coming to him in the end anyway. And then, just a little more arguing with the crowds, he goes and hides. It's not the light he chooses, but rather the dark. And from that point on, Jesus stays in the dark, close with his closest friends, and he speaks only with them about his leaving and the pain that will precede any of their joy. He hides with them until he's arrested in the garden and led away to be tried and tortured and crucified and killed. And where is the light in that? Well, I would say, hang on. It's coming. It's the same for me every year, you know. Just about this time, I've begun to enjoy a little bit of winter sunlight breaking into my bedroom in the early hours of the morning after those long months without that light, just about the time I can get out of bed and stop kicking my toes on the furnishings as I make my way to the bathroom in the early morning dimness. Along comes daylight saving time. And for at least a few more weeks, I'm plunged right back into the dark. You know, I like the sunshine early in the morning. Yet now it's morning and I still cannot see at least without blasting the lights on overhead. I mean, what's it gonna be, light or dark? And the answer is, for a while longer, it's going to be dark. You know, Jesus tells us plainly that into life some darkness must come. You know, consider that grain of wheat that falls to the earth, he says, and buries in the soil. Hidden in the darkness, Bereft of the light, the wheat dies, Jesus says, but we might say instead that the wheat germinates. The husk of the seed falls away. The plant pushes upward through the dark soil until it breaks into the light. And when it sees the light, it grows and it flourishes, and that one seed becomes over a hundred more. And that is apparently what Jesus sees in the darkness, a chance to return to the light. His time has come now to be lifted up 
by which he means crucified. And his time is coming when the single grain of his life given up on the cross and his body given over to the darkness and the tomb will find that light again and sprout the seeds of hundreds, thousands, millions, even billions of lives of faith led with compassion and service to others and with love. But first, the darkness. Well, it is the fifth Sunday of Lent after all. We are well along the path reminding us that the light, like this winter sun, grows dim before it burns brightly again. And no matter how much I long for Easter Sunday, I know that we cannot get there without first going through Good Friday. Yet we all look for the light of Easter through the darkness of Holy Week. This entire season is a lesson in living in the darkness, even as Jesus calls us back toward the light, calls us to let go of the things in our lives that need to die in order that we may more fully live, to die to self in order to live to God and more fully serve others. You know, I once read that Jesus did not come to do away with suffering or remove it. He came to fill it with his presence. But I think we might adapt that saying for today so that it might read this. Jesus does not come to do away with the darkness and remove it. He comes to fill it with his light. However you may now be traveling in darkness, I hope you will join me and others now in this journey of Holy Week that comes ahead and keep a watch for the light. Join me as we say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Craig, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by God. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. 
praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. At this time, I invite you to offer your prayers of intercession or thanksgiving, either silently or aloud. Today, we particularly hold in prayer those members and friends of the St. Stephen's community, Christy Bonneman, Mo Massapust, and Fran McKendry. For who else do we pray? O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
Good morning again. I'm so glad that you're worshiping with us today. I have a few announcements for the good of the community, particularly as we look to Holy Week starting next week with Palm Sunday. Palms and Holy Week at Home bulletins are available in Rubbermaids in the Outdoor Breezeway on 50th Street. You're welcome to come by any time this week and pick them up and then have them with you for Palm Sunday uh, next Sunday. For the live piece next Sunday, if you do have a palm, please do bring it so that we have a virtual palm procession uh, during our live peace service. Also, Holy Week uh, is going to be pretty special this year as we're offering our first chance since the summer to um, gather together for in-person worship. Check out your email from Molly about all the different worship times and opportunities throughout Holy Week and on Easter Sunday. They're a little bit different than what you might be used to, but we've planned some things that we think you'll really enjoy. The key here is that we need people to register ahead of time so we can get an accurate count, space people appropriately in the church, and make sure that we're accommodating everyone or as many people who want to come as we can do safely. So check all that out and we hope to see you next weekend for Palm Sunday and then walk with you uh, during Holy Week as we look towards Easter. Join us today at 11 o'clock on Zoom for the live piece. It's great to be with you. Please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Look down in mercy, Lord, on your people who kneel before you and grant that those whom you have nourished by your word and sacraments may bring forth fruit worthy of repentance through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.